Hello and a very warm welcome to Roving Camera. I am Bhavna Gulati Nayar. In this program, we bring you the highlights of the events of Parliament and its functioning happened in the past week. A four-week-long 35th International Training Programme in Legislative Drafting for Foreign Parliamentary and Government Officials is organised between January to February 2020. Chairperson Committee on Science and Technology, Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Jairam Ramesh addressed the participants during the programme at Pride. The Parliamentary Research and Training Institute for Democracies has been organizing the International Training Program in Legislative Drafting for Foreign Parliamentary and Government Officials and Officers of Parliament and State Legislatures in India since 1985. This is a four-week-long program organized during January-February every year. The Chairperson, Committee on Science and Technology, Environment, Forests and Climate Change Jairam Ramesh addressed the 35th International Training Program in Legislative Drafting at Pride. Jairam Ramesh asked the officer trainees to abreast themselves with the finer points of legislative drafting during the training program. The process of law legislative drafting by its very nature and very definition cannot take into account all possibilities. Uh, all interpretations. There will always be some exceptions which cannot always be incorporated in the body of the law. And therefore, making these laws uh, comprehensible and dealing with various situations that may arise in the implementation of the law uh, was a very important exercise. When you draft a law, you're dealing with a situation as it exists at a given point of time. But, you know, we all know politics changes, economics changes, situations change, circumstances change. Uh, and laws cannot be set in stone. They're not biblical. You know, they're not. These laws are meant to reflect current day realities. And therefore, uh, an integral element of many of the laws that I was associated with is a process of review of the laws uh, at the end of five years, at the end of 10 years, at the end of 15 years. Uh, and ideally, I was not very successful. Ideally, I would like every law to have a poison pill which says that at the end of 20 years, this law becomes history and you come up with a new law, if at all is required. But that was too radical an idea for our parliament to accept. So we don't have poison pills in our laws, but we have in many of the laws provisions for review, a periodic review and assessment. So broadly, this is the... The, this has been my experience with legislative drafting. Uh, most of the laws that I have been associated with uh, have raised very basic constitutional questions, and therefore they've gone to the courts. Uh, many of them, the land acquisition law, for example, now, many provisions of the land acquisition law uh, are being studied and analyzed uh, in the Supreme Court of India from a constitutional point of view. You know, one of the great dilemmas that we have uh, uh, as, as politicians, as political leaders uh, who are governed by the rule of a law is should a law be only prospective or should it also have a retrospective provision? This is a very fundamental question in the process of drafting laws. By definition, all laws are for the future. Laws have to be prospective. Because if laws are retrospective, then it becomes arbitrary and discriminatory. But there may be occasions, there may be occasions where you may have to introduce a retrospective provision in the law. And some of the provisions, for example, in this land acquisition law that I drafted, there was a retrospective provision, and that is now being challenged in the Supreme Court on constitutional grounds. But by and large, 99.99% of the cases, laws are not retrospective. Laws are prospective in nature because you, it, what the purpose of the law is to provide certainty and predictability to policy. And if you make it retrospective, then it becomes arbitrary and discriminatory. But however, there may be situations where the laws that get drafted in fact become prospective only and not retrospective. 
Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla and many eminent political leaders pay tribute to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose on his birth anniversary. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Minister for Parliamentary Affairs, Coal and Mines, Prahlad Joshi, Leader of Opposition in Rajya Sabha, Ulam Nabi Azad, and Chairperson, Department Related Parliamentary Standing Committee on Human Resource Development, Dr. Satyanarayan Jatia, paid floral tributes at the portrait of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose in the Central Hall of Parliament House on his birth anniversary last week. Other ministers, members of parliament, former members of parliament, and the Secretaries General of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, Snehrata Srivastava and Desh Deepak Varma respectively, were also present at the event. The portrait of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose was unveiled by the then President of India, Dr. N. Sanjeeva Reddy, in the Central Hall of Parliament House on 23rd of January 1978. On the initiative of the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, an exhibition of books on Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose, available in the Parliament Library, was held in the Central Hall of Parliament House. Booklets containing the profiles of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose brought out in Hindi and English by the Lok Sabha Secretariat were presented to the dignitaries. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla met with National Bravery Award winner children at Parliament House. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla on Friday interacted with the National Bravery Award winner children at his office in Parliament House. This year, a total of 22 children from different parts of the country were awarded with the National Bravery Award. This included a posthumous awardee. Speaking on the occasion, Om Birla said that these brave children deserve our best wishes for their acts of exemplary courage and extraordinary bravery. They have saved lives and served society by putting their lives in danger. I feel that there cannot be a greater service than saving the life of human beings. He further added that the parents of the children also deserve congratulations and that these children are an inspiration to all. Lok Sabha Speaker congratulated the children and wished for their bright future. In sabhi bachcho ne desh ke alag alag rajyon ke andar अलग अलग जगहों पर अपनी वीरता और साहसिक कार्य के लिए जो कार्य किया है वो बधाई के पात्र हैं क्योंकि ये कम उम्र के बच्चे लेकिन उन्होंने किसी ने दूसरे की जान बचाई किसी ने अपनी जान पर खेलकर दूसरों की जान बचाने का काम किया ऐसे विभिन्न क्षेत्रों के अंदर इन बच्चों ने साहसिक कार्य किया है मैं सबको बधाई देता हूं शुभकामनाएं देता हूं इनके परिवार वालों को भी शुभकामनाएं बधाई देता हूं जिन्होंने ऐसे बेटा और बेटी को जन्म दिया जो देश के लिए राष्ट्र के लिए समाज के लिए वीरता किए और उन्होंने योगदान किया है इसके लिए वह बधाई के पात्र हैं मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट फ्रॉम राज्यसभा भूपेंद्र यादव एड्रेस द 35th इंटरनेशनल ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम इन लेजिस्लेटिव ड्राफ्टिंग एट प्राइड द पार्लियामेंट्री रिसर्च एंड ट्रेनिंग इंस्टीट्यूट फॉर डेमोक्रेसीज हैज बीन ऑर्गेनाइजिंग the international training program in legislative drafting for foreign parliamentary and government officials and officers of parliament and state legislatures in India since 1985. MP Rajya Sabha, Bhupendra Yadav was addressing the 35th international training program in legislative drafting at Pride. Bhupendra Yadav said that the officer trainees should maintain high level of ethics, morality and credibility in public life. Right of environment. Uh, internationally called as a, a third generation human right. Why I say it's a third generation human right? At the international level, 
the Stockholm Conference of 1972 proved to be a landmark event which alerted the environment discourse. We can say that the third generation human right, what means, have found expressionly in 1972 Stockholm Declaration and thereafter, though the Declaration of Right of Development in 1986 and Rio Declaration of 1992, these were the main declaration in the modern time uh, uh, continue with the uh, Stockholm Conference of 1972. Now, apart from this modern period, what is the genesis of environment law in, in the present, uh, uh, after the Stockholm, um, Stockholm uh, summit, what is the origin of environment law right in the Indian jurisprudence? I say that 26th January 1950, we become a sovereign country, we adopt a Indian constitution. So that was the last day. In our Indian constitution, we have ensured some particular uh, articles relating with the environment. First is Article 21. Article 21 means right to live with a dignity. A dignified life means a person must live in a, in a life where he live in a good environmental condition. So, so many judgments passed by the Supreme Court also in our country. That is, uh, that is a right ensured in our Constitution, Article 21. Apart from fundamental right in our Constitution, we are having a fundamental duties also. That duty is assigned to the state. So, Article 48A of our Constitution says, that is a duty of the state, means the government, to protect the environment. That is a directive principle mentioned in our constitution. Then, in our constitution, there is a three parts. One is the fundamental right. Second is the directive principle of state. And third is the duty to the citizen also. So, the duty to the citizen, we have mentioned in Article 51A, the duty of citizen to protect the environment. Then, a common citizen can approach to the Supreme Court or High Court to the protection of their right, which is given under Article 21, so many environmental petition filed in our uh, Supreme Court and High Court, that is under Article 226 and Article 32 of the Constitution of India, right to approach the Supreme Court and High Court. So that is the genesis of the environment law in our present uh, constitutional system. It's time for break in roving camera. You stay tuned to Lok Sabha TV. Welcome back after the break. You're watching Roving Camera, a program that brings you the highlights of the events of Lok Sabha Speaker in the week gone by. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla was invited as the chief guest of the 47th annual celebrations on the occasion of the 300th birth anniversary of Sant Ram Charanji in Delhi. Vijayavargi Vaishri Mandal organized the 47th annual celebrations on the occasion of 300th birth anniversary of Saint Ram Charanji in Delhi. Lok Sabha speaker was the chief guest at the function. Addressing the gathering on the occasion, Om Birla said, arrival of Saint Ram Charanji was at a time when the society faced the social evils and vices like untouchability. Sant Ram Charanji, through his teachings and spirit, lit the lamp of social awareness, emphasizing the rights and equality of the underprivileged and deprived. He said that true service of God is to defeat the suffering of the poor. Sant Ram Charanji was related to the holy land of Rajasthan, which has also been the workplace of great saints like Mirabai, Bhagat Dhannaji and others. Lok Sabha speaker said that he felt proud and was delighted to be from Rajasthan. He also said that the Vijayavargi Vaishwai Mandal has been making commendable efforts towards human welfare following the teachings of Saint Ram Charanji, which is exemplary. शिक्षा का अंधकार था उस समय उन्होंने आध्यात्मिक ज्ञान के माध्यम से और शिक्षा और ज्ञान के माध्यम से 
समाज में एक व्यापक परिवर्तन करने का काम किया और लगातार उनके पथ प्रदर्शक के रूप में उनके बताए मार्ग के रूप में आज हजारों लोग राम स्नेह समुदाय के इसी तरीके से उनकी वाणी को लेकर समाज में एक व्यापक परिवर्तन किया और उनकी कृपा से ही आज ये राम स्नेह समुदाय को मानने वाला ये विजयवर्गीय समाज एक अच्छे संस्कार अच्छे विचार समाज के अंदर मानवता की सेवा करते हुए समर्पण भाव से काम कर रहा है क्यों जो जिस लोकसभा से मैं आता हूं उस लोकसभा क्षेत्र के अंदर विजयवर्गीय समाज का बहुत बड़ा योगदान है हर क्षेत्र में शिक्षा हो चिकित्सा हो सामाजिक और मानव सेवा के रूप में विजयवर्गीय समाज संपूर्ण समाज की सेवा करने का काम करता है और ये हम सबको मिला है रामचरण जी महाराज जी के स्नेह से मिला है उनके मार्गदर्शन से मिला है क्योंकि रामचरण जी महाराज ने एक समर्पण भाव से समाज की सेवा करने का काम किया उन्होंने मानवता को किस तरीके से निस्वार्थ भाव से सेवा करते हुए हर मानव के अंदर ही ईश्वर है ये मानकर मानवता सेवा का संकल्प लड़ने का संकल्प उन्होंने दिया जिसको पीढ़ी दर पीढ़ी आज भी हम उसी संस्कार के रूप में अपना रहे हैं उन्होंने रामधुन के माध्यम से किस तरीके से निगुण होकर हम मानवता के सेवा के माध्यम से मनुष्य की सेवा से ईश्वर को प्राप्त कर सकते हैं उस दिशा में उनका आध्यात्मिक ज्ञान हमको अच्छा संस्कार और विचार देता है उनकी राम भक्ति आज भी इस संप्रदाय को गांव ढानी तक फैलाने का काम कर रही है और विशेष रूप से उनकी वाणी के चालीस हजार से ज्यादा उनका संदेश हम सबको नई संकल्प देता है प्रेरणा देता है मार्गदर्शन करने का भूमिका रहता है लोकसभा स्पीकर ओम बिरला हॉइस्टेड ट्राई कलर एट हिज रेजिडेंट एट ट्वेंटी अकबर रोड ऑन दी ओकेजन ऑफ दी सेवेंटी फर्स्ट रिपब्लिक डे On the occasion of the 71st anniversary of Republic Day, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla hoisted the national flag at his official residence. The Lok Sabha Speaker inspected the parade and took guard of honor from CRPF personnel. Om Birla gave greetings to the people of the country on the Republic Day. He said that it was on this day that we adopted our revered constitution. As we celebrate the occasion, let us redeem our pledge to respect and abide by the enabling values and principles enshrined in our constitution a function to pay floral tribute on the occasion of the birth anniversary of lala lajpat rai in central hall of parliament house was organized on january 28 2020 Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, veteran BJP leader Lal Krishna Advani, MP Rajya Sabha Derek O'Brien paid floral tributes to Lala Lajpat Rai in the Central Hall of Parliament House on his birth anniversary. Other dignitaries who paid tributes to Lala Lajpat Rai included former members of Parliament and Secretary General of Lok Sabha Snehalata Srivastava. 
The portrait of Lala Lajpat Rai was unveiled by the then Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in the Central Hall of Parliament House on 17th of November 1956. On the initiative of the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla, an exhibition of books on Lala Lajpat Rai available in the Parliament Library was held in the Central Hall of Parliament House. Booklets containing the profiles of Lala Lajpat Rai brought out in Hindi and English by the Lok Sabha Secretariat were presented to the dignitaries. That's all we have in this week of Roving Camera. We will bring you more updates of in and around Parliament next week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Namaskar.